Jill Fries is from London, Ontario. Ashley Weber is from Dauphin, Manitoba. And they will meet now in this quarterfinal to see who becomes our second women's 10-pin semifinalist. Jill Fries holding the 202, and so she will go first to the 193 for Ashley Weber. The x-ray uh, coordinator will hope that she's got the mark set up properly. Oof. And she gets the vision that she wants right down there. Ten pin. Again. Competed in the World Cup National Championships. And placed 12th at the Worlds in Las Vegas. You mentioned that Jill is an x-ray technician. She thinks that your uh, red boxers are quite nice. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's a technician. I thought she had x-ray vision. Sorry. <laughs> Touche. Let's see if Ashley will make things happen here. Well, make note of that. You're one up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> There's two pins up, that's and that's not what tough, you want. Tough, tough, tough split. The 8 10. Well, possibly a go for the single pin by itself, which she did, and gets the best of what she had up there. There's two children at home. Parkway Lanes is the home center. Oh, come on. You just must walk away shaking your head. Well, the problem is you're so close that you don't want to make too many adjustments. This is not the type that you want to adjust. It's not a major problem but it just has to start seeing them falling down that did it oh, nicely done to, to hang it on the edge as it hooked back for her so the spare for Ashley Weber after the open nice balance here straight into it and there's the results she just drives the ball right through the head pin, and that's nice to see. One of these two ladies will become our second 10-pin semi-finalist, Jill Fries from London, Ontario, Ashley Weber from Dauphin, Manitoba. And it's an early advantage to uh, Jill with the s two marks, the spare, the strike up in two as she bowls here in the third. Great action. Direct and the uh, butt of the pin hit the 10 pin and uh, flash of the eyes there tells it all. Watch this release here. Right over the second arrow, the 10 board in there and there it is. Ashley has to just forget about what her opponent just did and do exactly what she did here. <laughs> she gets the strike, leaves three pins on the pin deck which is pretty cool. Must be in our mind to think about it. In fact, okay, you had two strikes. Let's see if I can do the same thing. We mentioned Ashley's uh, second straight appearance a year ago, lost in the preliminaries. A little thin. Strange, huh? How some pins will steep. stand the, uh, the test of time, and there's that five. How everything just wrapped around it. direct when she goes for the spare shot. That's good. That helps get some pin count as she sits at 49 through 3 with the spare up. Jill Freeze though has something going here back to back in the second and third. 15 bomb bowling ball going down the lane at this time and a wrap round missed it. Corner pin by itself. 
That gentleman is uh, Jill's husband, uh, Kerry. The lady in the foreground is an old friend of ours, Lisa Morabito, originally from St. Catharines, now makes her home in Red Deer, Alberta. She was uh, on the TSN pins game a number of times, and in fact, she has the record score in pins game play at 279 back in 2004. So it's nice to see Lisa again. Let's see what happens now as she takes her time picking up the bowling ball. Very methodical with what she does. She beat Cindy Dawson as we saw up on the screen there. Potential of 49 here for Ashley. Jill Fries has a 269 potential. There is a pin on the left hand side of the lane, however, that's stopping her a little bit. Wipes off the residue from the oil on a bowling lane. You have pebbles on a curling rink, you have oil on the bowling lane. Target is to use the oil to your advantage as it is when you are curling. Find the run in the ice. Absolutely, to read the uh, the read the curl, read the oil. Good marks. Marks for a Jill Freeze in all five frames so far. And a bit of an opening here for Ashley Weber. If she can get a strike. Oh, again, how that 10 just won't go. That ball went in there pretty good. It actually was a nice hit, but just the pins just bounced right around it. But watch the from behind. There's the turn as she came down through it, hits the head pin a little bit tighter than she wanted, and the result being the 10 pin still standing up here. Fortunately, it's not standing any longer. Well, watch as she releases the bowling ball because she stands up a little bit more direct than normal. She doesn't quite stay down. You get all your power on the bowling ball when you have your knee bend. But watch as she pushes the ball up, brings it back, and she's standing straight up. Gets a, a little bit of a bad break there. But if she uh, stayed down a little bit longer, it would be better off. Now watch as she gets a nice start here, but then she's standing up here instead of getting the power on the bowling ball. She's very strong, very accurate, comes right over consistently over her shoulder. But she knew she didn't have a good shot there. Now that's a tough spare because people, they lose sight of it in the background. They, don't, they forget about the back pins. She's liking it though. She knows she threw a good ball there. Jill Freeze with the spare up is in five as she bowls here in the sixth. Oh, that was that's a different kind of pin action. Almost like the ball got too deep. <laughs> and the, the pins just started revolving and to toppling over, and away she goes. 108 in the fifth versus 83. Still a chance. Yeah, so 25 pins the uh, difference, but the freeze with that strike in uh, the sixth. Watch as she stays down at the line. Right there, she's got the knee bend, gets the power in the ball. Oh, come on. Well, I'll tell you what, that, come on. that was almost another pin moving over there. Sitting there contemplating what she has to do because she knows she has a little bit of a break. If her opponent had got another strike there, it would have been a tough match, tough road to hold. Very well done. Yes. No question about it. When her ball leaves, the ball just goes direct, and there's not any doubt about it. Both women can get a 200 game, but they need to get some more strikes to do so. A little full. Or Ashley. Got a break, actually, because that could have been a bit of a split problem. Watch the release here as she comes back, stands straight up, goes over the third arrow. And bowling lane has arrows 
about five boards apart. She got the 5, 10, 15, and the center board being 20. She hit the 15 and then got away with it. Nice spare shot. You know what? They both have really relatively good games going. The difference being the fact that, you know, Ashley opens with the, has the open the nine count, has just the one strike. She hasn't been able to build anything with all those spares. Well, there's a strike for her. That's her first strike since the third. And you compare that to Jill, who has three strikes already. And it's all a matter of getting a double in the right spot. You know, and that's what she did in the second and third frame. And uh, she just kept steady, kept it clean. Watch as she goes down, bends the knees, gets the action down the other end, straight in. Wow, that was a good hit. Four pin left standing. If you're a real good right-handed bowler, you'll leave that four pin. Sometimes you leave the eight pin. The left-handed bowler would be the six and the ten pin over there. Let's see what happens here if she goes directly at it. She concentrates pretty good at the picking up the bowling ball. This is such a mind game. Her mind's on hitting the target, and she did exactly what she wanted. One forty-seven in the seventh. Spear up in eighth. So it's a twenty-five pin uh, difference. Basically, been this way now for for a while, as uh, the two bowlers uh, match each other. A little bit of advantage, though, for Ashley. She does have that strike up in eight. Looking to build on that as Jill throws here now in the ninth. Oh, good break! Good break to exactly. topple that five. The key for Ashley will be she'll have to hit the hit, get the strike. It's the only way that she can get going because the way that Jill is bowling right now, she's not going to give her too much of an opening. Ashley's sitting there contemplating, looking at the scoreboard. And you can be sure that she's thinking about one thing. Let's get another strike here. Jill's going right now, getting the spare shot. Well done. 166 in the eighth. Spear up in the night. But this is her chance now. This is Ashley Weber's chance. She has the strike. Put something together here, and that just narrows it down. If she doesn't get a strike, she puts herself too deep. Crossed in the over. Oh, my. The difference is that when Ashley releases a bowling ball, she sort of flips it a little bit. Right here, she sort of flips it versus Jill who goes straight through and does an, a normal type of a release. Ashley's got that. She's got it. Spare. So now she'll finish first. 24 pins the difference. Both bowlers with spares up in nine. I think the most important thing is that we've had a, despite the difference in the score now, We've had a pretty good match. There wasn't anything a, a giveaway. Boy, another one crossing over. Manages to uh, get the strike. I would imagine Ashley had a little bit of a mental problem there just at the start when she missed the uh, first frame. She got an open. And then you start trying to play a little bit of mind games with it. But she certainly came back with a strike there. There's a potential here of getting another one. Oh, what a great break that was to take out the 10. 182 is the maximum. Jill, on the other hand, has a potential of 216. Watch this. Bingo. And the 6. Hello there. Topples it. Could have been the 710 very easily. There's a good spare. Good finish for Ashley Weber as she bowls a 182. And now Jill sits at 176 with that spare up. She needs four to uh, shut her out. Well, she has eight and has a uh, baby split over there. The two pins that she'll be going for, but she has the match in hand. Absolutely, Jill. Frees from London will become our second semi-finalist and uh, it's been a terrific game for her, consistent all the way through. 
When you go back, she just had those two little opens that came at the end in her 207 win over Cindy Dawson. She has yet to have an open frame here in this game. That was an excellent cover. She just had no doubt in her mind whatsoever that pin was going down. Those two pins hit the ball right in the middle of them. She's going a little bit more direct now that she has the game in hand here. She averages 206 at the Bolarama Royale in London. And a strike here would give her a, a 204. Nope, it'll be a 203. So, two very nice games by Jill Fries. A 202 and a 203. And so, Jill Fries becomes our second semifinalist. Women's 10-pin play, the TSN Canadian Bowling Championship.